grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is the Gospel just read from St. John chapter 10. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. The tender mercies of God are manifest to us in his Son's resurrection. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, is bound up in Jesus, the Risen One. God raised him from the dead, and now he himself goes out and searches for the lost, the sheep of his pasture that have strayed away from him. In one place, our Lord described us as harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Do you ever feel that way? Are you harassed at every side? Are you rudderless, lost, without direction? Does it almost seem to you like no one is in charge, and that things continue to happen however they will, sometimes good, sometimes bad? God knows your own trials of body and soul longs to gather you into himself. And one thing is for certain, beloved. God has great plans for you. St. Peter put it this way in our epistle. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. God longs to hold you and to keep you in the palm of his hand. God longs to keep you safe, to feed. He doesn't want you to continue to cling to sin like that old shoe that fits great but is oh so bad for your feet. He sins. You don't need them. They are so not you anymore. Yet every day it seems like we continue down those same lost paths. We commit the same sins. We wander away like sheep that don't know any better. Why do we do this? We do it because we forget who we are. We don't know any better. Yet our Heavenly Father longs to draw you to the still waters of His Word, to give you good pasture, to feed you with the food of eternal life. God wants to give you all things in His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In our Gospel today, Jesus talked about the relationship between Himself and His people, His sheep. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't actually interact with sheep a whole lot in my daily life. We city folk don't have much of a sense of what it is like to try and round up a hundred sheep, keep them together and save feed and water them, guard them against wolves and other predators and the like. Generally, we don't know by experience how sheep really are. Sheep sometimes get a bad rap as a dumb animal. I'm not sure if that's fair. It would probably be better to say that sheep are herd animals. Maybe that they are trusting animals. They follow together. They're rarely in groups of less than four or five. What this means is that if a sheep goes astray, it's likely led astray. If it goes astray by itself, it's almost certainly completely helpless. So of all the animals, for God to use as an analogy for us, why does God use this one? How does this help to teach us about the resurrected Jesus, his life for us as the Good Shepherd? It means this. You and I are followers. We may follow other people. We may follow our own hearts and desires, but either way, we are followers. 
Even when we rebel, we rebel in imitation of the truth. Because you and I have followed down the wrong paths for so long, God must shepherd us back. He must draw us to Him, keep us in Him, guard us, feed us, lead us to the still waters. He says it this way in Ezekiel, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. Now, this is all good, but simply saying, the Lord is my shepherd, can be kind of an empty phrase. Jesus, the good shepherd, can quickly become no more than a pat saying, a plaque on the wall, hallmark of theology. It has no flesh and blood because we don't really know what it means. So this is where we talk about the church. Christ is risen from the dead, ascended into heaven, but he is not absent. He's hidden hides himself here in his church. The church is Christ's tool, his voice, his hands. There is this deep relationship between the good shepherd and the under-shepherds of his church. When Christ returned to heaven, he appointed apostles to be his messengers, his ambassadors. Those apostles were to preach in his name, forgive sins on his behalf, baptize and deliver his body and blood to the sheep, God's people. When St. Paul spoke to the church at Ephesus, he said it like this, Be on guard for yourselves and for all the flock, among whom the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. God has put a pastor in your life to serve you. In this case, it's me. But God, of course, has used many others for this purpose. The person isn't important. The office of the pastor for us is the link between God's word and God's people. Remember, the word pastor literally is shepherd. That's what the word is. In the Lutheran Confessions, we put it this way. Thank God, today, a seven-year-old child knows what the church is. Namely, holy believers and lambs who hear the voice of their shepherd. God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead. He is your good shepherd who guides you to the paths of eternal life because of his tender mercies. He preaches to you, waters you, feeds you, protects you from evil within and without. You dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Listen to his voice. For in his word you have eternal life. Follow the voice of the shepherd, the voice you heard at your baptism, the voice you heard and hear as you receive his body and blood in the Lord's Supper, the voice you will hear at the last day when he will raise you and all believers to eternal life. Listen to that voice, for in that voice you have life, you have it to the full. Believe it for Jesus' sake. Amen.